So if you rub yourself up against the cactus, does it hurt you? No. Nice. Did the impact of the food cart make him break apart there? It looked like it. Alright, there we go. I've, I've avenged my past self. <laughs> Alternate timeline, Grayson. Yes. Oh no, and there's another one. Oh. Okay, this time I busted out. Gotta hit R3. Nice. So did you just kick it? Well, you have to hit it more than once. It's like... Right. I don't know if you're kicking your way out or... It'd be pretty funny to kick your way out. I don't know why, but it would be. He'll kick you apart. He'll kick you apart. <laughs> I don't know if you get that. I do not. <laughs> I'll, I'll show it to you later, then. Okay, great. Is this another... <laughs> I, I, like... I know it's not, but part of me hopes it's, like, some really terrible wrestling gimmick. Oh, no, it's got me again! There we go. Part of you hoping it's what? Just, like... Like some, uh, wrestler who refused to use his arms or something. No, it's, it's not wrestling related. Damn. I know we try to tie everything on the channel back to that. <laughs> well, I do. It's just, like, so easy to talk about, because it's so dumb. Speaking of, uh... Speaking of dramatic confrontations, we're less than 100 meters from Ishii now. Hmm. Uh, I, it's interesting, he's not moving around. No, he's... He's no longer... Whatever grabbed him is keeping put. It looks like we've wandered into like a soul... Like a soul caliber arena. I know. Just some weird fighting game. Oh... Uh oh. That's interesting. This game has only a few things that would be called like proper bosses. This is this is one. I I think um bosses in like shooting games is weird. It can be difficult to do well, yeah. Well it depends on precisely like the genre and like like depending on the setting as to whether it can, it makes sense or not. Right. Like um uh, I like Deus Ex's bosses. Uh, Human Revolution. Did you play that? I have. A lot of it, that, that was actually a lot of people's biggest, uh, complaint with that game, actually, was the boss fights. Yeah, I don't know what you just said. I said that was, a lot of people's biggest complaint about that game was actually the boss fights. Oh, yeah. Well... Okay, but, anyway, there's a couple phases in this fight. First, you're just shooting that big, that big mouth thing up. Top. Okay. Yeah, you're blowing through these phases pretty fast. I don't know if... The, the, well, the, the first one is quick. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Now it, it's it's gone into heat, and it's expose, exposing its swollen red female baboon ass to me. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Now, yeah, now you aim at those things. Interesting. They first open quite messily. Plant heat. That sounds like a, like a really bad like directed video smut movie. <laughs> Plant heat. Be like I'm like Cinemax at one in the morning. Not that I spent my adolescence watching such films. Right? <laughs> okay, now he's okay. After now we gotta we gotta pummel this top thing again. Oh no! Lucky, yeah, luckily you can break free of that. Oh, nice. And also, see that thing there. Ammo, ammo will periodic continues to spawn in this area. Now, is the f the flare gun more effective against this thing? Uh, not to my knowledge. I mean, like you think it, like because it sets fire. Yeah. 
So, not to my knowledge. Okay. That'd be interesting. Oh, see, and, I was, and you can also, in addition to shooting the mouth thing, you can shoot like those. I'm not sure if you can really just shoot it anywhere or if it's shooting those wounds. But, oh, oh. Here, it's coming up. That thing is pretty disturbing looking. I got I like, I, I, kudos to whoever designed this. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. Sort of like what I imagine fighting like the dark young of Shubnagura would be like. <laughs> yeah, you know, like they're really not plussed by this. They're just like, oh shit, giant plant monster yeah. thing. <laughs> they're not really like, yeah. what the fuck is going on? They're just like, huh. Well, they're both. <laughs> they're great. Gray was and Trishka is like part of like you know they're super elite interstellar commando force. So maybe they've run into. Who knows what kind of weird alien life they've run into. But yeah, they are, it's still, they're, they're taking, they're facing this like pros, that's for sure. Now I am out. Uh, yeah, notice I'm actually running low on, right, on carbine ammo. And it does, like I said, there's, ammo does spawn, but even so, the amount of fire you gotta pour into this thing, it does take its toll. And you want to keep moving against this thing. Yeah, it's pretty ni it's pretty nimble for something so big. <clears throat> uh oh. Well, it's not so much that it's agile; it's just that there's he it's just so huge you can reach everywhere. Well, it's moving pretty fast for something so big. That's true. so something yeah. I and, something and I noticed. Something that's a plant. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, it's an ant for something that's a plant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright, now I'm shooting the bouncy balls. But it's right, you're gonna... Oh, well, like, so... Have you played very much Team Fortress 2? I have never played Team Fortress 2. Okay. So, something I noticed when you use the minigun in this game is that it gives you that heaviness where you yeah. can't move fast and you can't move the reticle because it's simulating the yeah. weight of a minigun. And it depends on the game, but like uh, that weight, that heaviness is not actually present in games like Team Fortress 2 and uh, Halo. You can actually move around really quick. And well, in ha well, in Halo, you're a seven foot tall cyborg in powered armor. Right? Yeah. Oh, oh, it's this is getting messy now. <laughs> uh oh. Oh no. It's not dead yet. God forbid. Keep moving. You do not want that thing to get its mouth around you. See, that's an innuendo. Yeah. Okay. But you were saying about Team Fortress. 2. Oh. I was just uh, curious about the like gun design. Like, I, I wonder why it is that people put the weight on the minigun like that. Like, is that something people just expect? Well, the one in this game, it's pretty damn big. Right, but what? I mean, but like, what gameplay purpose does it serve? You know. Well, it feels a little more realistic that you can't move as much with the from that. Either. Yeah, I suppose. And also, I mean, and also, just from, like from a gameplay perspective, it creates a, uh, I mean, like a, you know, a trade-off, and it's just, it's, pour it's pouring. Like the, the weapon is, in it's interesting to use, but it's not like superior in every respect. So there's still well, it's choice. it's heavily impractical because the player wants to move fast, and if they had to choose between a minigun and moving fast, most people move fast. In this game, usually, whenever you find one, you're not you're pretty close to an area where there'll be like a lot of guys to mow down. With, yeah. Not down with and that's what. Oh, so um, there's a I can't remember the reviewer, but I remember him talking about this game, and he said that something that's Bulletstorm, and I'm noticing, uh, what it does is it marries 
the path of least resistance with the path of most fun. And so what that means is to, like, um, make the thing that the player will want to do naturally the most fun thing. So, like, there's a bunch of enemies ahead, right? And you've got a minigun. Yeah. So, that, I mean, that just makes sense. True. Because it's fun to shoot a minigun, and it, but it's not fun if there aren't enemies. Yeah, you gotta haul it around. Okay, yeah, now it's... Yeah, what the it's hell? all those... Those nasty looking things, they're all red and like, damageable. God, that looks awful. <laughs> I mean I mean it looks I mean I mean I mean it looks good. I mean it looks graphically good. I mean it looks horrific. Yeah. That's yeah, seriously, they're just like not even reacting at all. Yeah, they're very very calm about this whole thing. They're they're surprisingly chill about the fact that they're fighting a great old one. <laughs> yeah, it does look like an old one. An old and deep fuck. <laughs> uh. And like I said, keep moving. Yeah. There's good advice. Not more ammo to spawn. Well, I imagine this this uh veranda area where you are now might have been a nice viewpoint. Oh, yeah. Well, it's got these nice columns and... I just wonder if, like, the whole planet's a resort? Because it seems like they waste just a shitload of space. Well, yeah, it's... The, the most of the planet is not inhabited. The only inhabited part of it was the, is the resort, yeah. Huh. Um. Or now the you know the post the apocalyptic Mad Max hellscape around the, what was the resort. Interesting. Not sure why it's paused here. I may have been going to the bathroom or something. <laughs> this part might might not make. Oh. No. Okay. Um. But yeah, most of the planet, the planet is uninhabited except for the resort area, which is pretty small. It was, it was, it, well, it's, it was created relatively recently. Before, and it was only, it wasn't in operation all that long before things went awry. Well, with this many problems, I can only imagine how long it took. As I've said, it's a poor choice for a vacation spot in many respects. <laughs> it's like the first time uh, Disneyland opened up. All the Why, rides shut down. Them? Oh yeah, all the rides shut down, like midway. Uh, they talk about it in Jurassic Park. Uh, the owner trying to convince everybody that's o that it's okay, that the dinosaurs are all out. And he's like, yeah, on Disney World's first day, all the rides shut down. And somebody was like, yeah, but... Uh, what did he say? When uh, when Pirates of the Caribbean shut down, they didn't tr come alive and try and eat everybody. Speaking of Jurassic Park, have you heard anything about that new movie, Jurassic World? Or I have heard a little bit. I don't know. Is um, what's his name? Shoot the uh, the guy with the glasses and the voice. Jeff yeah, Goldblum? is he in it? Oh, that's such a shame. Wasted opportunity, if you ask me. I don't know, those movies after the first one suck. <laughs> I never watched... I, like, I, I didn't watch with serious interest any of the other movies. Although 3 was better than 2. Yeah, how does that work? Oh, you know what? Never mind, I take that back. There's plenty of movies where that happens. I do, I do laugh though because uh, Jurassic Park is still the gold standard for like CGI dinosaurs somehow. It's, it still looks great, yeah. And and it's like most computer. Well, partly I think it's probably because there actually were a lot of physical props mixed in, animatronics and whatnot. But yeah, it's really impressive considering CGI usually ages really badly. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it was like the best, uh, best part of that movie. Like the effects were great. 
Yeah. Man, how this is just going on for forever, isn't it? Well, partly it's I'm not doing this as efficiently as I could have. Yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, nice. I think that got it. Feed me, Seymour. <laughs> so, okay. So, what is that? What is that voice? What is what? The voice you're doing. Little Shop of Horror? Oh, okay. Okay, I gotcha. It's, it's a literal redneck now. <laughs> it's upset because it was not accepted at the resort. <laughs> In fact, they're, they're, too, they're too good for him, they think. <laughs> Too snooty. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like you know the Beverly Hillbillies. They come to to Beverly. And... <laughs> All right, we victory. Nice. That was quite the struggle. Down we go. Insert. Hoping. Just hope Ishii's okay down there. <laughs>